You know, it's funny, this was the very first Jay Feather Micro, and I still think it's their best one. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd of RV down here with some nice updates on the 166 FPS. Uh, again, this is the longest running J Feather Micro, and overall, I still think it's about their best floor plan because what they managed to do here was pack like tandem axle storage and features into a smaller, lighter single axle kind of camper. Where if you're solo or couples camping, like it's just maybe you and the old dog or something like that, or an iguana, I don't know what you have, I don't know your life, you could um, <laughs> you you could get by in this thing pretty nicely without needing a giant like Bigfoot Gravedigger monster truck. A, uh, a tow package midsize should generally handle this one pretty darn readily. It's seven and a half wide, it's dual Asdale walls, and they've done some nice little tweaks this year. They, It's been a lot of exchange where they, they've kind of uh, listened to the feedback and they said, okay, if you don't want this, then we'll give you this instead. Like for instance, uh, not a lot of people were really too into the brush bar guards on the outside, so they subbed those out. A lot of people said, I could absolutely care less about that little outside mini fridge. So what they did is they just left it open for storage but they still left the power outlet there so if you do want to put a fridge in you can or you just have a power outlet outside in an enclosed cavity which is really freaking handy if you ask me we got tpms goodyear wrangler tires and closed belly this year they've standardized the solar package and they've also standardized a uh, about a 20 25 percent larger 12 volt compressor fridge giving you even more cold storage so frankly even though they got rid of the outside mini fridge you actually haven't lost any cold storage it's, it's just kind of washed out. They've also gone with uh, a, uh, uh, the, the refrigerator door could open from either side. So if you just want to pop in uh, from outside to grab a drink, you can, or while you're inside the RV, you can open it the other way. It's just this floor plan, they continue to dial, dial in. Like the storage under the, the sofa is awesome. But it does have a couple hitches in its giddy up you might not like. Like the bed, it's only 54 inches wide. It's not a full 60 inch wide bed because they're going for a specific link target. And giving you information like that to help you make an educated decision for your hard earned money, that's what I want to do here today. So thanks for tuning in. Like our video if you appreciate what we do. Subscribe if you haven't before. Let's get going. The thing is here, this model did not need a lot of love and the uh the tweaks and the changes they made are not really like whoa that that's huge and, and overt they didn't need to do all that it it's gonna do the job pretty darn well one of the things that they did shift basically across the entire j feather lineup is uh one decor instead of two but what they did is they took their two previous decors and they basically kind of merged them Overall, it's farmhousey, but you see little remnants of what they called vintage wash gray. I used to just refer to them as farmhouse and vintage. And now, the one decor they have is called, wait for it, vintage farmhouse. <laughs> but in a little RV, it looks good, and there's fewer, like, it, yeah, it's not all one wood tone, but there used to be, like, a lot of different wood movement going on in here that you really don't have anymore. Now, the RV is seven and six wide. It's seven and a half wide, and that is an 80-inch long bed, but you still, because of the extra body width, have room for that headboard there uh, with the handy little uh, power tower that pops up with some household and USB outlets. Or when you push that thing all the way down, it's actually a, a wireless phone charge pad, which is cool. Um, the bed, though, is 54 inches wide. They were doing that because, uh, like you say, well, why aren't these, you know, are these guys fools? Why wouldn't they make the RV six inches longer and make it a, a true queen size bed? Um, when, you know, you're, you're trying to manage an RV brand, one of the things that you have to consider is how much it's going to cost to get RVs shipped out to like your, your Western dealers. And if they'd have added the extra six inches, uh, it would have meant that they could only ship two at a time instead of three at a time on a flatbed to Western dealers. And what that means is that uh, a lot of the country would experience 50% more shipping cost per copy of one of these. And that's thousands of dollars per trailer. So that six inches quite literally means thousands of dollars to a lot of people. So that's why they do it. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you don't like it. And I respect that. I don't like it either. <laughs> but I do understand why it's done. Now, it is a 12-volt entertainment center right there. Um, and one of the things where I'm going to open that up and, and show its storage. And uh, one of the things I really like about this RV is a suggestion I personally offered when these were first in the prototype phase. Hidden up way behind there in the storage cavity is actually a hanging clothes rod. But it's out of the way enough where if you want it for hanging clothing, you have it. And if you don't, you don't got to worry about it. Now, I'm sitting over here at the sofa, kind of giving you a view of everything. And this one today we're looking at is outfitted with the uh, optional convection microwave package. 
There is no gas oven option on these, despite having that three burner stovetop. Instead, they just opt for maximum storage below. And again, we'll get all that open for you uh, in a little bit here. And you don't see like one giant campsite window, but between the bedroom, the kitchen, and the entry door, you can have some reasonable campsite viewing. I think a little camper like this, uh, you're probably spending a lot of your time outside anyway, but this one has enough of a comfortable living area where if you are stuck inside uh, on a rainy day for an extended period, you can survive without going stir crazy. And I actually think they could probably scale the lighting back in here quite a bit. Uh, it would actually save a chunk of money. It's, it's between the labor and the materials, um, lights and windows are two of the most expensive things in RV design. That's why uh, you look at a lot of the budget brand RVs um, and they say, you know, we're, we're just like this brand, but we're less money. Well, that means you're not just like them because something had to give. And a lot of times if, the, if you want to make an RV thousands of dollars less immediately, take out windows and lights and it gets the job done. Now, I get questions all the time. Where can I get those cool little swivel stands? Uh, Jayco has, I don't know, some kind of patent or exclusivity or something. But basically, if you contact a Jayco dealer, they can run a VIN number off one of the units that they have uh, that has those things and uh, get them ordered through Jayco for you. But basically, Jayco's where you have to get those. Now, I've never done this before, but I would call this the foot of the bed that I'm laying on currently looking forward. Just to kind of really show you the cross breeze windows. And you see that little drop knob pendulum thing down there? Um, that would be uh, for the blackout roller shades. Now, this is really nice. Like I said, the headboard power uh, tower, that gives you household and USB outlets for the bed and one side of the sofa, but you have more of those over here. So it's very nicely equipped, very like, you know, if you got a lot of modern techie kind of stuff that you need to keep powered up like an idiot like me, well, you know, you got the perfect little opportunity to do that. Now, this year, they've not only gone with a 10 cubic foot refrigerator freezer instead of an 8, but they also now have this thing uh, outfitted with a uh, the, the bathroom, or the, not bathroom, I'm an idiot, gross, not bathroom, refrigerator. <laughs> oh, man. Um, why, why was that in my head? I'm not even sure. Obviously, I don't edit my video a lot ladies and gentlemen but there you have it that's a little peek into my mind the refrigerator door can open both directions as you saw now if you look this is uh people will compare this a lot of times to like a geo pro 19 fbs similar floor plan jayco and rockwood often butt heads and go very head to head but this one is a a significant chunk heavier it's wider it's got taller sidewalls and it has so much more storage I really like GeoPro. I'm a massive Rockwood fan, like uh, probably more than I should be given the role that I possess here. But uh, the fact is um, this thing has more storage than that GeoPro could ever hope to have, but it also weighs more as a result. So, you know, it, it is a push pull. Now the sofa here, I, I love the extra drawers that they're including under that now. And you know, you kind of have the choice, like obviously I can fold down to a little sleeper. You've got that uh, table that we're going to see outside kind of slotted behind it back there. But you also have your choice between it being cuddle compliant lounge seating like we're looking at right now or a simulated cinema seat with that fold down armrest if you need a little bit of population control uh, separation uh, right there. I think Prince made a song about population control. Um, maybe not. I'll get back with you on that. Moving on. <laughs> Those who know, know right now. The space around the toilet's not terrible for a smaller camper. The elbow room for righties like me is a little bit tighties. Um, you know, and if you're wearing your whitey tighties in here, well, it's gonna look a lot like a shower curtain. By the way, if you don't know the difference between underwear and a shower curtain, you must be the one who's been wiping your backside with my shower curtain. And I would really appreciate it if you stopped, uh, neither here nor there. That's a fun little thing to ask people. Do you know the difference between toilet paper and a shower curtain? And they go, no, what? And you just look at them and glare and go, so you're the one, huh? Um, anyway, maybe, yeah. Uh, I, I think I'm going to work on my open mic night routine some other time. Uh, <laughs> I do like that it's a full medicine cabinet here. The RV six and a half foot tall sidewall, which is great. Um, a lot of the shorter things, I can't really stay in the shower. Now, I can stand in the shower this, but I can't really move around a lot. But at the same time, at least I don't have to Scrooge McDuck my way through this thing. So, uh, you know, there's there's positives, there's negatives to all kinds of different RVs. And just to show you, you do have some handy outlets there for the bathroom and, and a surprisingly large sink. The thing is, this RV's road mode function is fantastic. And it actually makes me wonder the question, does this RV even need a slide out? 
Because with the slide closed, you see how easy it is to still navigate through here. And actually, if this RV didn't have a slide out, they'd be able to kind of push the whole sofa thing back just a little bit. Now, you might ask the question, you know, can I get a, th like this RV would be great if it could get a theater seat. That's quite literally not possible in this RV. In an RV of this size, the, sl the sofa is actually sliding above the wheel well. The wheel well sticks up above the floor line. So it is not possible to have a floor flush uh, slide out that you kind of need for a theater seat in an RV like this. Uh, but, you know, it, it, you could just bring yourself like a little floating ottoman or something. They actually had those last year. They opted for more cabinet storage this year instead. But whether you're, you know, you hop inside uh, just to grab a drink, you're going down the road. But, you know, the bed, the kitchen, the toilet, awesome, awesome travel road mode function on this one. Tow package midsize pickups should actually be a pretty good pairing for something like this. If you notice, the maximum weight of it is basically 5,000 pounds. Um, the, the base dry weight of the camper is a little heftier than, on, than some single axles. It's just over 4,000 pounds. That leaves you just under 1,000 pounds of available cargo carry capacity. So you might want to kind of uh, plan accordingly for that. Now, one of the things that's kind of nice here is they are using dual Asdell walls through the entire J Feather and White Hawk lineup. But if you're not familiar with Asdell, it's a lighter weight compartment composite material uh, although obviously the RV has gained some weight in some other areas like in this floor plan specifically the, uh, the the slightly wider body and the absolute crap ton of storage adds up very very quickly but there's also little details like this that are easy to miss the fact that they're using dual propane tanks and the one we're looking at today is actually outfitted with the optional dual 30 pound tanks instead of 20s so where a lot of single axle RVs have a single 20 pound propane tank, this has at least double, if not triple that. If you do wanna spend some time untethered and away from things, uh, you'd be able to run that furnace uh, for, for quite a while. And really the furnace at this point uh, is about the only major consumer of propane, although the uh, on-demand water heater obviously being a, uh, another of the uh, propane appliances here. Now that table, as you notice, that's the table that we saw inside, kind of tucked away behind the sofa. Over here uh, on that marker light, you can see that little black box sticking off the back of it. These are prepped and ready for a full observation camera suite. So not just a backup camera, but um, also side view as well. And something else here, they've always had like that power outlet right there in the little pass-through compartment. But now you've also got this now just wide open cargo compartment right here where there used to be a mini fridge. Now they obviously left the power outlet in there because they already had done the engineering. They already ran the wiring. So they said, why take that out? They don't want to diminish features, but they had a huge number of people who said, we don't care about the outside fridge. We'd rather just have the storage. And yeah, as an owner, if you bought this RV, you could take that out. But that then, you know, meant that you paid for a fridge that you weren't using. So now, if you do want a fridge in there, you can have it. But, you know, people who don't want it aren't paying for it. So I think that kind of makes sense right there. Got those Goodyear Wrangler tires. Um, TPMS also standard on these. So 87 mile an hour rated. And you can keep an eye on your tire pressure while you're going down the road live in real time. That is a very handy thing. I've actually personally uh, looked, I had a, a tire pressure alert come on in a vehicle once and I looked down and my tire pressure was like 29, 28, 27, 26. And I was like, oh my God, I have a flat happening right now. And I was able to get myself off the road before I had an absolute destruction of a, uh, a blowout or something like that. So I've kind of become a little bit of a TPMS fan myself. They're using front and rear um, corner stabilizer jacks and they're using the newer quick drop stabilizer. One of the cool things on those, you know, those of us who've been around for years um the old you know take a power drill and put the hex nut chuck adapter on that sucker and uh pretend that you're a nascar pit crew, dri pit crew driver i call that the cordless jack system what i didn't find out until like last year is common scissor jacks are you're not supposed to use them on a, a, like an impact drill on those things well these new quick drop stabilizers you can which is nice they're just heavier duty in general now you may have noticed just in front of that stabilizer jack was a, a sewer hose holder tube which is kind of cool um they don't have any kind of bumper or hitch on the back of these it's not that they couldn't it's just that keep in mind you know they're already a fairly heavy single axle and to, you know it's more than just slapping a hitch on the back of it you also need to gusset and reinforce the uh the chassis because inevitably someone's going to put a heavy chunk of weight back there like a portable generator and then you start tweaking stuff so i guess i'd be kind of curious 
would you be open to the idea of uh, Jayco smoking a couple extra dollars and a few extra pounds into this thing if it meant you got a rear hitch? Now, I don't have an idea of how many pounds and how many dollars, so I get that that's a bit of a loaded question, but, you know, whatever insights you can provide would be welcome. Um, over here, black tank flush, full hot cold outside utility shower, and you might notice they got some decent ground clearance here, so your sewer stuff is not dangling down near the ground, and notice how you don't really see... Uh, a lot of exposed blade valves back there in your black and your gray outlets. So for uh, things like, uh, you know, extended season use, this has the capacity. You can option on tank heaters on this. Up top on the roof, you saw the 200 watt solar package. They do have a new, um, well, not new, actually. They just still have the optional Overlander 2 package, which will uh, add a second panel and an inverter to the RV, which is kind of cool. And you may notice the cargo rack up there. That is a perfect place, not just for like mounting a bike rack or something like that if you wanted it, but if you wanna actually add some extra solar panels without screwing stuff through your roof membrane and then having to seal it, creating a potential additional leak point, that is the perfect way to accomplish that little thing right there. So let me know what you think about this one right here. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm gonna start moving on to the next one because I've got a bunch of things to record here as you might be able to see. Now, if you ever wanna check pricing and availability off something in one of my videos, what you can do is either uh, click the links in the video description or if you're watching off like a connected TV, like YouTube TV, smart TV, um, I leave you a QR code right there on the screen where you can scan that with your phone and check all that stuff out. So, uh, curious to hear your input. Where did they nail it? Where did they fail it? In the meantime, I've got a whole lot more in store for you, so stay tuned. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Good things to come. Bye.